It doesn't take much to see that we are living in times where wickedness is increasing. Humanity has become prideful, godless, but at the same time, the gospel is spreading through technology at a rapid pace like never before. And these are the things that scripture said would happen right before the second coming. No one knows the exact day or hour, but does scripture warn us of the season or even the generation of his return? That's what this video is all about. Now, a few years ago, we released the Hosea Prophecy documentary and other documentaries that explore typology and parallels of scripture indicating that season. And we mentioned that there are a lot more parallels in scripture we would investigate in season four. And season four begins this summer. But guess what? Before we even released the first episode covering these topics, a documentary we knew nothing about was just released and it covers much of the same things we are going to look into. And that documentary, Messiah 2030, already has over 700,000 views. And people have been saying, have you seen this documentary yet? Have you watched it yet? And so we checked it out and found it interesting. And so before we release our content that will explore some of these same themes, today we will look at this documentary. Does it hold up to scripture? And does scripture indicate the season of the second coming? This conversation will get deep. It's solid food. And I think you will enjoy it. Many will read the passage in Peter and say, maybe he was just using a day as like a thousand years to just show that God's being you know, just long suffering and patient, which God is patient. But the the Psalm passages passage shows that this is more than just allegory. He's trying to tell us something here. For one thing, I've always thought, you know, God lives in eternity. So what is time really relevant to God anyways? It's yeah. not like, so so <laughs> it's must, there, there must be something else here. And, and, and uh, I, yeah. To your point, Jerry, 95 percent, if not more, 98 percent of, of commentators will apply an allegorical approach to it. They will apply mm -hmm. that this is that Peter's not really being specific here, that P, that this is more how how God is outside of time. Yeah. The counter argument to that is God repeatedly in his word says he's eternal. He is everlasting. But in this situation, he's using a very specific uh, principle of a day for a thousand years. And then we can get into it and, and chat about it more about how, again, it goes all the way back to day one of creation. And mm -hmm. Adam, Adam was told that he would die. All right. And the day he you eat. Die, he would return to dust. The day he sinned, Adam right. did not die in the literal 24 hour yom where, you know, when he sinned, when he partook of the apple or not the apple, but the fruit from the forbidden tree that Eve gave to him. Hey, so Brady. he did not die in a 24 hour yom. But if we look at that principle from Psalm 90 and from Second Peter 3, 8, he did not live a thousand years. He literally did return to dust on in year 930 so he made it uh you know point nine three oh days if you will. right and, and and there has never been any record of anyone in scripture making it past a thousand is that right i believe even methuselah he made it he almost made it he got up to like 967 yeah maybe so that's interesting so nobody no has been able to make day. it past a day no one's been able to make it past a day in God's sight um, or a thousand years. So that's, yeah, that's sort of, uh, I guess you're, if you want to, and for a third witness, you do have Revelation 20, which specifically mentions it being a 1000 year period. So, mm -hmm. and it mentions it six times. Right. And so again, we, you know, I know you went to Beeson, Jared, and, and probably the, again, much of Christianity, people that are interested in prophecy generally don't don't view it this way. But much of Christianity 
has been taught that we're already in the millennium. And, you know, we've had private discussions. If this is it, it's it's not real good. It, it doesn't, it doesn't well, fit it, the bill. <laughs> it, it doesn't seem like you can really make a strong argument that Satan is currently bound and not, because the revelation says that he will be kept from deceiving the nations during this millennial period. Right. And he is uh, most definitely deceiving the nation still. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And then, like, when has he been revealed? You know, the Bible says that, you know, the man of sin, the man of lawlessness will be revealed. and He's going to be sitting as God. You know, mm-hmm. when when have we seen that in, in history? I don't no, think right. we've seen that yet. You know? No, we haven't seen it. Scott, I'd love to hear you on this. I've, I've watched now. Uh, two thirds of the Messiah twenty thirty documentary now. Oh yeah, and, Let's yeah. Talk about, we we gotta talk about oh, it. Now. Oh man, yeah. All right. So a lot of that stuff is really interesting, and I'm thinking there's something to that. You know, <laughs> my only question is he has this um whole list of prophecies that align with the seventh day. You know, all the days being interpreted as a thousand years <laughs> that the creation week. Is like a map of all of existence, you know. Um, he has all these prophecies to support it. Some of them use the Jubilee principle, and then some of them use the thousand year principle, days right. a thousand years principle. How do you know which one to use in certain times? You know, wait, wait. that's one question I'd ask. Wait, let, let me say this real quick. Can I, can I interject? Yes, of course. For those who are going to be watching this, we're referring to a documentary that um, has been getting a lot of talk lately. Um, it's called Messiah 2030. And it's, it is basically arguing that around the time of 2030, um, we should be seeing types and, sh- and parallels in the scripture that show that things may be coming to an end as far as this age. And the documentary is very interesting. I think it does a great job of, of giving you a lot to chew on as far as the typology of scripture. So um that's what we're kind of talking about right now. And just want to throw that out there because someone may be saying, what What are y'all talking about? So, And, and real quick, I did, uh, I messaged the guy that produced it. I won't say his name right now or his ministry, but I did message him. And, and I've been looking at Facebook. The biggest pushback he's getting from, from uh, Christians interested in prophecy is, is the saying that no man knows the day or the hour. After I started studying the the appointed times, and that's I'll just call them the appointed times right now, the feast, the feast that no man knew the exact day or hour was the feast of trumpets. In other words, it's Yom Teruah. It occurs <laughs> on the first day of the seventh month. That that just shows right there the typology of the the feast because it's not a coincidence that it's the first day of the seventh month that the trumpets happen. That's the fe- a and, day of shouting. And no one knows when, right? There's no one so you, you don't so. know exactly when because what if it's cloudy? Now with our astronomical tables right now, we would know when it would be humanly possible that there were no clouds or haze or smoke or volcanic ash. Mm-hmm. in the air to sight that moon we we would know pretty much but we wouldn't even maybe know the exact hour you could spot it with the naked eye and so that's been the biggest pushback he got because we've all heard it no one knows the day or the hour i mean i've been a prophecy geek since i was a little kid and i can tell you that 95 percent of the times that i speak to an average believer who's not interested in prophecy I like to, me and you are prophecy geeks, Jerry, and we can sit around and talk about it all day long, but your average Christian believer sitting in the pews will throw up. No one knows the day or the hour. Why are we, why are we even talking about prophecy? Why, why are we, you know, no one knows the day or the hour. And so if you go on, 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 on Facebook right now and you look at Messiah 2030 and look at the comments, half the comments are no one knows the day or the hour. But again, we I don't think we're going to know the specific hour or maybe even the day, but we do know the appointed time. We know that 
and the the year because I think we will know three and a half years, years after, after the, the abomination of desolation. Three after and a half the years abomination after of desolation, we're going to know it to within about a day or two. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, full um, agreement. <laughs> Simple, so, simple yeah. math. Forty-two months. I mean, you got forty-two months that that the that the beast is giving authority over the nations and and even to conquer the saints. Uh, Revelation in chapter thirteen. He's just repeating what Daniel had said. That's very interesting. I've been thinking we we can know, and we've been talking about this a lot. You you maybe not the day, you know, um, but we can know the season. I like that you say that. Season. Um, that makes sense. And I, I think it works together with, you know, Matthew 25, always be ready. And then Jesus is warning saying, you don't know when the thief is going to break into the house. You know, that works with that along with look for the signs of the times. You know, you are in error because you don't know the signs of the times. You know, like there's obviously something we can know. Yeah. Um, yeah. The thief, now, the thief motif is everywhere. It's in it's in the parables. It's it's obviously uh, it's in Thessalonians where Paul is saying Paul's talking about Jesus coming as a thief in the night. And that gets quoted a lot by a lot of Christians. I'm like, no, can you please? And I'm being oh, mean. Now, but can you please keep reading? Right. It's mm -hmm. it's for those in darkness that he comes exactly. as a thief. Exactly. It's not it, for, it's for those that know yeah. scripture and are in the light. He's mm -hmm. not going to come as a thief. He Ooh, only comes as a thief. Well, you guys, when I get back, like on the Messiah twenty thirty well, thing, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about the first day. Well, we talked about Adam dying that first day. Well, well I think, well, um, I think that was a good uh, point to bring up too, as far as how each day of creation does seem to correspond to a each thousand year period since Adam symbolically um i think i think he brought that out pretty well in the documentary did john did you i guess you saw that part brendan mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. did you think what did you think about his analysis of that like okay i thought that was very interesting yeah. um you know all right water covering the earth the second day matches with the second period of thousand years okay the flood which happened at about 16 56 or something yeah um, years after creation okay so i get that i like day three seeds are spread up spread around the earth okay um that symbolically goes to when like the seed okay yeah like, like, um, maybe you can make that work yeah. the seed of that, that one's that one's okay mm -hmm. but then of course day four with the light that's a big one you know the that's light from the sun and then uh you know and then of course at the fourth set of thousand years in world history that's when jesus is born um and there was even a prophecy that he brought up i took notes somewhere where somewhere. it actually talks about uh jesus like connecting jesus to the sun like the star there there sun is a righteousness there. <clears throat> yeah yes that the malachi oh man my dude knows his stuff so well, yeah dude I've, I've sent jared my my notes i've got like 200 google docs with just notes and notes and notes but yeah the son of righteousness and that the sun was created on the fourth day and then the the fourth trumpet and the fourth bowl but what's affected the sun the moon the stars when were they created on the fourth day in other words it's not a coincidence and yeshua jesus came as the son s-u-n of righteousness at the end of the fourth day and then and then as it went to the fifth day, you have what, what's created on the fifth day. That's when you had the fish and the mm -hmm. birds created on the fifth day. And then you have the gospel spreading just as fish and fish and and uh, birds spread on currents. You then start having the gospel of the kingdom being spread throughout the, the known world and to the nations on that fifth day. And then on the sixth day, we see, you know, man is created and we see what's happened on the sixth day as we sort of started to take dominion of this earth. Look what we're coming up with this AI. And we have now have the ability to literally destroy ourselves in no time. And 
all these point. prophecies about being able to control money and a one world currency, they just happen to be happening right here at the end of the sixth day when everything that we see in Revelation mm -hmm. is, is actually technologically possible to implement. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, another thing I'd like to point out is that, you know, if I say if, if we are uh, in the very end of this six day plan about to enter a 7000 year period, it is so interesting that right on the brink, less than what, less than decades before entering that, like you said, we now have the ability to talk about it with this technology, you know, the Internet. And I think about this sometimes. The internet and and Zoom and all this stuff, this could have been invented 20 years from now. Why did it have to be invented right now? Um, we are seven years away from 2030, and now we're able to have the conversation. Thousands of people are able to listen to this. Man, No coincidence. Uh, that's a good point. The, God, the, God, the kingdom should be you know, preached to all nations. Then the end should come. Right. I like that one of the typologies I like, Jaron, uh, is if you look in John chapter one and chapter two and you count the number of days, there's four days mentioned, I believe, in chapter one. If you go through and you look at it, you'll count four days. Mm -hmm. And then it says on the third day, which would also be the seventh day, the wedding at Cana occurred. Right. And, and so that would be another example of after two days and on the third day, there's a wedding, a, a, a shadow picture of this third day prophecy, the seventh day prophecy, because it was also on the seventh day, uh, according to John's account. Mm -hmm. uh, the, when he went, the only, the only person he revealed himself initially to as the Messiah was the Samaritan woman, one of those transplants from Babylon or Assyria or wherever that got brought to the land. And how many days did he stay with the Samaritan people? Two. Two days. And then the parable of the good Samaritan. Yep. In other words, he gave him enough, enough uh, money to take care of the, of the injured, beaten up man for two days. days. Right. And so you you keep seeing this pattern over and over. And this one always intrigued me. It's not two days before the res before his crucifixion. It's not even close in the chronological when he tells that old fox, Herod, <clears throat> after two days. And, and then, then you can do a little. Then I'll uh, accomplish my goal. Yeah. Yeah. After why two do you say days. you had to say, why did he say that? Do you, are you all familiar with that passage? Uh, I'm Who trying to, that? let me look it up. Was that let's Mark? See. Put in Herod. Herod and Fox, it'll come up. That's how I find scripture. <laughs> I know, right? Keywords, <laughs> keywords. <laughs> yeah, same. The Pharisees came to Jesus and they told him to leave and go somewhere else because Herod wants to kill you, right? And then Jesus responds to the Pharisees and says, go tell that Fox, I'm going to keep on driving out demons and healing people today and tomorrow. And on the third day, I will reach my goal. Mm. Yeah, and this is and this isn't even close to the crucifixion. That's not that. Well, <laughs> in, in the crucifixion, the see, we know it's more than just the crucifixion because on day one and two of the crucifixion, he was in the grave. He wasn't doing healing, right? No, oh, you mean no, before this the was resurrection? This, yeah. So I believe this is the type. I believe this is him so. saying, "Hey guys, I'm gonna go away." Like Hosea, that Hosea prophecy, I'll. If, uh, Jose uh, yeah. I will go away and return to my place until they, speaking of both Judah and Ephraim, return to my place, Yah incarnate, the word yeah. made flesh. I will go away and return to my place until they acknowledge their guilt and seek my face. In their distress, their tribulation, they will search for me. And then we get to. Come, let's return to the Lord. He has torn us, but he will heal us. He has wounded us, but he will bandage us. Allusions to Isaiah 53. He will revive us after two days. He will raise us up on the third day that we may live before him. So when Jesus returns, are we not raised up? Are we not living Absolutely. before him? Are we not in his presence? Ezekiel says the entire house of Israel will be raised. <clears throat> 
I think it's the same event, right? Yeah, and, and, and that's what's cool about Ezekiel. A lot of times he's only referring to the singular house of Israel. And if you start to really study this, like even Jeremiah 31, 31, it talks about, behold, there are days I'm going to make a new covenant with the house of Judah and the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. Well, after that new covenant is made, it says no one and nobody will teach for they will all know the Lord. All of a sudden, the house of Judah disappears. It's just the single house of Israel then. Same in Ezekiel 37. You got two trees, two sticks. Oh, they brought together. together. And they're going to be no, There's no division. Nation. There will be no more division. No, no division. In other words, and th it gets to that. And that's if you, you we see it in the creation days where what God's plan, he divides in order to multiply. So then he can bring back together. He took Adam. He divided Adam into two so they could become Echad, become one. He took the nation of Israel, and due to the sin, they got divided. The larger house got sown and scattered, lost its identity. And again, at the end, he brings them back into one, that uh, two sticks prophecy. That's good. That's good. And <laughs> um, and so we were saying how uh, with, the, with the Hosea prophecy, you know, he basically, it basically just says the entire thing that they've been torn to pieces and um he has he has hidden himself from us let us return to the lord after two days or two thousand years we will be raised on the third day in his presence and john you were about to share a scripture of how also there is a link between the third day and the seventh day yeah um in numbers uh 19 he shall purify himself with the water on the third day and on the and on the seventh day then he will be clean. But if he does not purify himself on the third day and on the seventh day, he will not be clean. Mm -hmm. Like doesn't that that goes That's amazing? Like, yeah, that go, goes with the end end time. You know, the third day and the seventh day it's because the, because the third day. Yeah, that time of purification where we make ourselves clean before God during that time period, and then. It says, but if he does not purify himself on the third and seventh day, he will not be clean. Not be clean. Oh, so that tells you, you know, if you're not, if you don't purify yourself, you know, that's that's it. You know, those are the days that you know the Lord has given us, and I believe it mm. has ties to this. You know, the um, end time, third day and seventh day. If you're not purified um, by by then, we haven't repented. And trusted in the Savior who purifies us, then you're done. You're done. Forty years, forty being a, a time of testing, time of judgment. Yeshua being in the wilderness forty days and forty nights. Moses up on the mountain forty days. Isaiah fasted for forty days and forty nights. Uh, you know the Jonah the king, forty days. Yeah, and the, the, the kings of Israel yeah. all ruled for forty years, and you multiply. 20, the number of redemption, but you know, by, you know, and it, it, it's just the math. It's like, it's so simple. I like to say it's really, it's like second or third grade math. You really six is. plus one equals <laughs> seven. You know, when it, when he tells Noah 120 years, you know, for the, for uh, 120 years, I will not strive with man for 120. We'll multiply 120 mm. by 50. 50 the Jubilee. Jubilee cycle. So 120 Jubilee cycles is exactly 6,000 6, years. It has been, it would have been exactly, uh, you know, again, 20, uh, let me get my math right. No, four. Yeah, no, 40 time of judgment, Jubilee cycles from the time Yeshua ascended and returned to his place. And when he, and when he comes back, so you've got the, so 40 times 50 is 2000. 2000. I mean, so, and, 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 and the guy that did Messiah 2030, he made some interesting connections too about King David. Um, he mm -hmm. only ruled in Jerusalem for 33 years. He, he was king. He was only king over Judah for seven years. He was king over all of Israel for 40 years. Most people don't realize that, that after, you know, mm -hmm. after Saul's death, you mean and 33 they, yeah. And then it was seven in Hebron. 
and then yep. and, yeah but but he was not actually king over all Israel uh, until Israel made him king in other words he was king over Judah and and you just start to see these <laughs> that distinctions like for instance crazy. You even see before the kingdom was divided, you see in first and second Kings and first and second Chronicles where Judah had 300,000 and Israel had 700,000 men in their army, you know, and it talks about King Solomon when it says in all of Israel and all of Judah enjoyed peace under King Solomon. So you start seeing these distinctions and we in the church were just taught that only the Jews are Israel. And then you start to see that, no, there was a, these whole 10 tribes that were apostate and got exiled, and we still ain't returned yet. No. <laughs> yet. Mm, mm, not completely. <laughs> and um, I just think that's like, fascinating. When you look at the, the, the Jubilee, when you multiply that times things, like like Moses living 120 years, Jesus, what, what God said that, man's time will be 120 and initially you know that confused me because we all know people and even in recent years who have lived longer than 120 mm. so it didn't make sense for him to say that humans won't live longer than 120 years right but for him to say that he won't strive for man longer than 120 and then that actually be a shadow of the six thousand year period once 20 times the 50 that makes sense because it kind of goes well, along with what the other scriptures seem to be saying. Another um, smaller shadow is, y'all know the story, I always forget his name, I just call him the baby infant king. Well, his mama made Jezebel look like a sweetheart. Mm -hmm. I think her name was Athalia mm -hmm. or... A, Josiah, yeah, you talking yeah, about? Yeah, the yeah, baby king yeah. and, and, and after the king had died, or I forget anyway. Yeah, Athaliah. She, she murdered Killed all, all of her house. children. She she murdered every descendant except the infant king, and the infant king was hidden in the temple for six years. And on the seventh year, he was revealed on Feast of Trumpets. And, oh, then, wow. and then the wicked queen, yeah. Mystery Babylon, Jezebel, was slain by the priest and by, by those that were keeping the covenant. In that seventh year, in other words, and then the king and that king did a really good job for quite some time. And then he kind of fell off at the end, too. Oh, that's but, a Joe Ash, I think. But it was yeah. it was I just call him the baby king. Oh, he was the infant yeah. hidden king. He was the only one that survived the the massacre, if you will, mm -hmm. when she was trying to kill kill essentially the messianic line. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and God supernaturally protected that line as he promised David he would. Man. So that would that, be a, another just a shadow of what happens on the seventh day. So that, that goes back to what you said earlier, Scott. You know, in the scripture, Jesus said, you know, all the scriptures you learned before is about me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, so it's, yeah, it's all about him, man. You know, um, yeah, and and I believe the 2030, Messiah 2030 did a great job of just revealing that too. It, and the thing about that documentary is that even though they had so many uh, typology and parallels there, they didn't exhaust all of them. There's still so many more that include yeah, wow. the significance of the seventh day in God's pa prophetic pattern that he didn't even mention. Now, That's he, the beautiful thing about it. He probably left off that I know of about 30 to 40. Mm -hmm. uh, the the guy, uh, Gabriel, 2028, the end. I mean, he actually, when I reached out to him, he says, yeah, God showed this to me. I said, dude, my daddy wrote a book on this in the 70s. This isn't, this isn't new information or anything. Well, even before that, the whole the whole point of uh, 2030 documentary was to show that this idea of a day equals a thousand years and there's a 7,000 year plan was written about thousands of years ago. Mm -hmm. Oh, easily. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I, it's wait, in that document I sent to you, Jeremy. But it's got the quotes from the from the Talmud and the Mishnah. Yeah, or the, or the rabbis are going back and forth on you know, like Rabbi A says so. so this and was so, a common <laughs> understanding. Yeah, and different subject, Jeremy, for another day is is what 
types of prophecy might be fulfilled, though, on a future Passover. You know, will Satan try to mimic what Yeshua did, what Jesus did 2,000 years ago? Will he actually die on a Passover and, and pretend to be resurrected on a first fruits? Will he try to mirror and mimic what, what Jesus did? I mean, because the whole world's going to be going to going to buy into um, this. So oh, something, it's going to it's going to it's going to be actually, that's actually a good point. I think that you could make an argument that the man of lawlessness may stage some kind of false resurrection. Um, well, we know he is mortally wounded, mortally in the wounded, head, yeah. and then he uh, lives, and everybody is astonished that he lives. So you know that could be similar to a resurrection. Yeah. It, right. it, I think it happens on a Passover because it kicks off the final 42 months and then you just you just roll all over 42 months and you're in the seventh month, you know, from the first month. And <clears throat> and that takes you to the fall feast that takes you to trumpets, Day of atonement and, and the Feast of Tabernacles. And that's the wedding feast. That's the seven day wedding feast. Yeah, very so. interesting. No, but uh, yeah. we'll go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, um, I was looking at the time here, and I was saying, <laughs> Brother Scott, um, are you able to go for another three hours with us? <laughs> I can go as long as we I knew it. <laughs> yeah. I knew he was going to say, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no, he really could. He really can do Dude, that. Well, but I, this, but is I what think, I, this is what I like. I'm just joking, by the way. Well, I, I know that. Jerry, I've seen Jerry yawning over there, but no, I, yeah. I like doing this. Like, Jaron does a great job organizing these videos and putting them all together. Oh yeah, I, I'm a I'm a little jot note taker, and the way my brain works, if y'all feel, kind of figured out a little bit, I'll I'll run over here and I'll run here and I'll run over here, and so these are the like I have a YouTube channel, and this is what I do is host people, and we just we just pick a topic, and usually don't even stay on the topic, we just we just start chasing. I like to right. call them feel, you know biblical bunny trails or right. Fox trails. Or- of Noah, Jaron, we totally missed the Noah prophetic type where he was 600 years old when uh, when he was uh, when the flood started. Oh the yeah, flood didn't end until his until he turned 601. So it was after 600 years when the flood ended. In his seventh century is when the flood ended. Wow. It started huh. in his last year, good. very yeah. last yeah. year. So we got to make it through 6,000. The seventh day doesn't start until you get to 6,001. It sounds so precise, you know, when it comes to like, and I know we're still going, but it sounds like when it comes like the third day and the seventh day, it doesn't seem like once you get into that seventh millennium, you have a lot more time left before you actually rest. It seems like the typology shows like, I think it's bam, you know, twinkling of an eye. Bam. Huh. Like, as the once that 2000 ends, period are up, that's it. And so again, stay tuned for season four. We will have many documentaries that explore some of these things and more. Uh, but until that is released, you can watch the Messiah 2030 documentary on YouTube and uh, share your thoughts on it here in the comments as well. And our meeting here was much longer and covers more subjects. And so you can watch the extended video by visiting the link in the description or on Patreon. God bless you and stay tuned for the upcoming presentation on the power of prayer.